Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be making a nice long lasting wide gate using the Homax Easy Gate system from Home Depot. So if your gate's in need of repair or rebuilding because it's sagging, then stick around. Welcome to the Work and Dirt channel. I'm Joel, and in this video, we're going to be building this nice wide gate using the Homax Easy Gate system. Now, I know all of you guys probably have a nice small narrow gate that's probably saggy on its last hinge, and this is going to fix all of that. This system's nice and easy to use up to a gate of six feet wide. And in our situation, we had a small uh, 36 inch gate, it was really small, and we had a couple posts here which were removed. And you can click on our other video to see how we remove the post, which is nice. Um, and this, this system is very simple. It only requires a few things, being the system itself, which comes with these brackets and fasteners that go to your 2x4 frame. And you'll just need some 2x4s, uh, either pressure treated or redwood. And then your dog-eared boards, which could be cedar or redwood. And then you have your lock latch system in the front, whatever lock type of system you want. Uh, so it's very simple. We'll link those parts in the description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, but let's get started. We have our measurements now and we have 55 inches from the top of this post to the house and the house is actually kind of leaning in a little bit and I think it's just because of these uh, shingles or cedar shakes that are on it. Because at the bottom we have 55 and 3 eighths, it's a little wider. But I did check the level on the post and the post is actually leaning out that way as well. So they're both parallel that way. So uh, it's important to take note of that because you kind of want to work with your shortest width so we don't pinch our gate. Uh, so now with the new system we have out there, uh, they say to take your overall width and subtract an inch. Uh, in our case, we're gonna have a two by four here that will act as our strike plate for the gate to cl close on. So we're gonna subtract an inch and a half of that two by four. That's our opening width. And we cut our two by fours an inch smaller than that. You'll see right now, uh, we'll take you out there. Let's go. All right, this is the Homax Easy Gate uh, system we're going to install on our gate and it prevents gates from sagging. And there's other ways you can do this, uh, but I found that this is a pretty good deal considering that it comes with the hinges and hinges and hardware is always expensive. This was 35 bucks, um, but you, if you want to make up for it instead, you can run cable, they have cable anti-sag kits so you can go from corner to corner, or you could even cut 45 inch, uh, not 45 degree pieces of plywood to put in the corners or you put brackets there's different ways you can handle the shear uh, tension and prevent it from well shearing or sagging so uh, but we're gonna use this system and we're gonna fasten our boards to the two by fours with a two inch ring shank galvanized nail uh, you can use little um, they got these staples that are galvanized but uh, if you have a dog like in case they do um, you want something a little stronger because they could push the boards out or you can use screws exterior screws of course um, but these ring shanks are gonna suck in tight these things have little ribs on them and once they go in they're really hard to pull out so that's what we're gonna use to fasten our pickets to our boards here so I think we're ready to get started let's do this a close eye on everything as you see there's a gap there because there's a weld in here and it doesn't let the board as you see right here slide all the way in so you can notch the board a little there because you want it to be nice and tight or you'll screw your measurements up We 
are making sure that our gate is on the same plane. We want this to be planar. So we're gonna use a nice straight board across the surface of this fence. And then we'll be making a mark on the house. And then we can use a level from that point, but you always wanna double check if this is not level front to back, then you could have a situation where this gate is shutting uh, on a different axis. So we wanna see if it is planar down here as well. Or plumb with this line right here, I should say. It's, uh, it's leaning forward a little bit. So we're gonna, we're gonna cheat this a little, this kick plate, we're gonna cheat forward a, a little bit so that it, it shuts better and looks nice and even. The boards we have are 72 inches, which is pretty standard for your fences. But if you leave the gate at 72 inches, what's gonna happen is if you mount it, it's gonna be taller than this uh, existing fence because this concrete is higher. So what you have to do is always double check your ground and make sure your level or how high it actually comes up. In our case, it actually comes up about seven eighths of an inch right there from one side to the other. Uh, so with that, what we're going to do is transfer a line the level here to the side of this fence. And then now we can measure from there to the top. And that tells us 70 and a half would be uh, a good length for our fence boards to not hit. But I think I'm going to go 70 inches just to give us a little more clearance and for it to swing. So we're going to cut. Uh, basically two inches off the bottom of the fence boards and then we'll be good now placing your fence boards on your frame is kind of a tricky thing just like laying down flooring you want to make sure you have enough boards to cover the area without a narrow little strip now in our case our boards are pretty wet because it's winter and they're cedar so in the summer they're gonna dry and shrink a lot so even if I butt them up which I'm inclined to do they'll look like they have an eighth inch gap when it comes to summer. But just to be safe, I grabbed a thin little piece of cardboard, which is almost a 16th inch. And I think I might use this just to be on the safe side. So that when I go to nail them in, I have a, t a tiny little gap just to be safe, but you can use anything that's fixed, but whatever you do, just account for it with the width of your board. Divide your overall width of the gate by the width of your board plus your gap. And that'll tell you how many boards you need and then you can also center those within your gate so that you can, if you want, you can rip your end piece because you don't want a super small piece here. You can rip this one a little bit and rip the end one. And that way you got a nice centered look. And then the next thing also is where to set your gate and where to nail your boards. I mean, do you nail them all the way down, all the way up? In this case, what I did was measure from the top of the other fence picket on the existing fence, I measured down 11 and a half inches is where the old post is on the old fence. So I made a mark at 11 and a half inches. That, so that now when I go to screw my hinge in, I'm below the post and I can screw into the post on the existing fence. And now I know where to place my pickets because I'm referencing the top of the existing fence. All right, so a little trick to make your little narrow board look a little more natural is to run your speed square up on the corner, 45 degrees, and cut your little dog ear. There you go, now looks like it came off the factory floor. definitely want to check to make sure that you're still true or perpendicular because these boards can fool you and they'll start tapering one way or another so you gotta do it probably every three boards and check square all right so we started with putting a 
two by four down to shim up the gate because it's always tricky trying to get this gate mounted, especially when it's nice and wet. So we just knew in the vicinity what size spacer we needed because we did the math like I told you earlier, cutting two inches off the bottom. So we now put it on this two by four and then we put a level across the top of this and that told us that we are level. So now we are ready to pre-drill our brackets and then screw them in. Alright, so now we're going to install the strike plate and we're going to put this right here where we made those lines coming off the plane of the fence and we're going to put this fuse it it's very good adhesive it's like nine dollars a bottle we're going to put it behind the screws so that it fills the holes that we're going to screw into the house now normally yes i don't like attaching things to houses but in this case they have a big E that's gonna protect it, and then also they're gonna change the siding in the future because, well, if you look around the corner, I already replaced the backyard siding. It's gonna be another phase down the road. So instead of putting a post in the ground and blocking the construction in the future, we're just gonna to attach to this, and it's not hinging anything, it's just allowing the gate to attach to. All right, here you guys have it. The finished gate using the little bracket system by Homex. Swings nice. You can add a horizontal member here in case, you know, just for extra support so these boards don't warp. But right now they seem to be nice and straight. They're good. Now, but the other thing you're gonna wanna do, like I said, is support this post that's hinging this gate because it's a big gate when it gets wet, it gets heavy. So there's a couple different methods you can use which is you can run a, a metal strap on top and sink a lag bolt into that post and then connect it to this member and then even add a strap here to here to transfer the load to this post. But ideally you'll wanna use like a diagonal member of wood or metal or a cable and sink a screw or eye bolt into the top of that post and go down to the bottom of this post. And that'll keep that four by four by four post from leaning and you know if you're building this fence for brand new you would probably use a four by six post and on its strong axis to prevent that but right now the post seems pretty strong the fence seems pretty rigid so we're gonna leave it right now maybe add the support a little later so hope you guys enjoyed it oh shit oh.